being self-employed is not all about being rich and wealthy and famous and all that good stuff. For me, it really boils down to living the lifestyle we want to live. I'm hoping that when our kids get older and start getting out in the world and experiencing more things on their own, they'll start to reflect back on what they saw their parents going through as they grew up and realize just how unique our situation is. One of the big things I think that makes our aprons and stuff a little more popular than maybe some of the off the shelf brands you see at the big stores is that we can customize our stuff. Um, we can make an apron that fits your needs, fits your tools and fits your work style. Which when you have a tool that works with you, you can work so much more efficiently and save so much more time. We also really wanted to kind of focus on a lot of the finer handmade aspects of it. Uh, a lot of the, I mean, none of the stuff's mass produced. Everything's done in house from cutting the straps. Um, even the labels, I get a full hide, I dye it, cut it into strips, cut it into rectangles, stamp them all. Everything's done in house, uh, mostly because we can retain quality control that way. I really like the way things were done back in the day. The copper rivets were a big, big thing for me when I first started making aprons. Um, Levi Strauss, what set them apart in the denim industry back in the late 1800s, early 1900s was copper rivets. And uh, I forget the name of the fellow now, but there was uh, somebody working who was starting to do repairs on some of the clothes and found out that a copper rivet did exceptionally well for supporting um, any kind of a stress point and started putting those on to repair pants. Levi Strauss got wind of the repair methods and started implementing those in their new pants. Also, rivets give you the option to repair things later on down the road. And I think a lot of the times in our kind of throwaway society that a lot of people mention we're in today, you throw it away because you can't repair it. With these, it gives you the option to repair them. So not only do they stay out of the landfills that way, but they stay in the hands of the craftsman who owned them for a much longer time. You know, I, I read a thing one time when we first started doing this job on our own that said uh, self-employment is working 80 hours a week for yourself so you don't have to work 40 hours a week for somebody else. And there could not be a more accurate statement that describes my feelings towards this whole industry. I will gladly put in 80 to 100 hours a week on my own doing this than to ever go back and work for somebody else again. Um, it's one of those things where once you've had a taste for it, you can just never forget it. You can never let it go. So thankfully, I enjoy what I do. I love being a craftsman because I'm stuck with it now. Never going back. I'm here for good. And I couldn't be happier. So the Benchoffs built this place in 1900, and then they sold it in 1919. We even found out after we acquired the building that my wife's great-grandfather, Lamar Wilkinson, who purchased the property in the house that we now live on and raise our family in, he got married to his wife, Mamie Turner, in 1912. They got married in 1912 and had their wedding reception in this very room I'm standing right now. Once we found that out, we knew this building had to be ours. We knew it was meant to be at that point. And the first time we walked up those stairs, my first thought was that was the first set of stairs that her great grandparents walked up when they were married. In their wedding dress, in his tux, they walked up there as a married couple for the first time. And here we are, 106 years later, occupying the same space, doing the same thing. That kind of stuff blows me away. So the history behind it's just great. One of the things that we've really enjoyed while poking through these buildings and 
trying to research a bit of the history and find out more about them is some of the businesses that have been in here before. It was a tailor shop at one point. Then around 1911 or 1912 is when the, uh, the first national bank opened up in this facility and didn't last long, just for a couple of years. From a saloon to a tailor shop to a bank, then a boot shop, saddle shop. And then when Walensky's took over, it was a Western wear store. I mean, you can probably even see some of the remnants of clothes and boots and hats floating around here. This thing's held a lot of stuff in its time. Been a lot of stories told, a lot of memories made. We're hoping to continue that if we can do some much needed repairs. I can't wait to hear sewing machines pumping away, people pounding on rivets, you know, hand planes just along a piece of wood. That to me is the ideal scenario for this place. But first, we gotta stop the water coming in because of the mosquitoes that won't stop coming in. If we can fix that and get it dry, then we can make all of our dreams happen in this place. We can preserve this beautiful building we can keep its history going, we can keep it involved in the community of Menard, help it be a cornerstone of this community. Such a small town with such a great history, and a lot of it's falling apart right now just because people just don't have the means to keep it up. So we can operate out of this building, and I think keep it going. Keep it going for Menard, for the people, and keep craft alive. All of it depends on this space, but it depends on rain not falling through. We're almost there.